Hello everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. This video is going to be me answering questions from our viewers. I've done this before, but the channel is growing constantly. We're always getting new people here. Every single video I post, it's new to somebody. So I've decided at the end of each month, I'm gonna open up a question and answer opportunity for anybody who's new or anybody who's not new, who just maybe has a question. Sometimes people don't know that it's okay to ask questions and I want people to be able to have a space to do that. So this video is going to be answering some of the questions from our May question and answer video. I should mention too that in a lot of our like weekly vlogs and stuff like that, I try to answer and respond to as many comments as I can that are in the comment section. But if you'll take a look at most of my videos, there's anywhere from 250 to over a thousand comments on each video. And I don't always see everything. It's really hard to respond to everybody. I don't want anybody to ever feel like I'm skipping over them or ignoring them. I've had people say in the past, like I've tried to ask you this multiple times and you never answer me. It's not personal. There is just so many comments. I, I, I probably get like a thousand comments a day on like multiple videos. You know what I mean? So it's, it's hard to keep up, but that's why every single month at the end of the month, I want to put a specific spot for people to ask their questions. So really quick, um, before we get started into the answer video of the question and I answer, I wanted to give a quick recap to the people who have been here for a while. Again, if this is new to you or if our channel is new to you, this update might not make sense but you can fast forward a little bit if you want but we haven't posted in about like six days so I just wanted to say hey and check in to everybody who usually is here watching our videos continuously um, it's been a crazy week it is summertime for a lot of the teachers I have friends who are teachers and their kids are out of school but their parents are still in school so I have been nannying for these two little girls when they're here during the week I don't like to film just because a, I don't want to put anybody else's kids on the internet because it's not my kid, it's their kid. Um, and B, I just want to be present while they're here. I just want to hang out with them and make sure you know that we're having a good time and staying safe. I don't want to focus on recording or anything like that. So I have been doing that. That was like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday last week. And then Friday, I had a photo shoot that I had to travel for. So that took up most of the day. And then we had sushi dinner Friday night. And then Saturday, I had a wedding in the afternoon that I also had to travel for. All day Saturday morning, I was driving around looking for a dress to wear. And I ended up wearing a dress that I had at home anyway, not even the one that I bought. Then I had to meet Gio's mom to drop off Sebastian so I could go to the wedding. Went to the wedding, came home. Got Sebastian Saturday or Sunday afternoon and then Sunday evening Gio finally got his yellow car started he has been working on it for over a year on and off with his dad but he's been working on it for over a year and he finally got it running and was able to drive it yesterday so hang out till the end of this video to see Gio finally starting and being able to drive his yellow car it's been a long time coming all right let's get into some of these questions I think one of the most asked questions that we get all the time is, are we going to have our kids? And the answer is yes. There has never, it, n it never feels like the right time to have another kid especially with a kid like Sebastian. At any given time, he could catch a bug and get really sick and end up in the hospital. And I've always really struggled with figuring out how I would divide my time up, um, having a kid in the hospital and having a kid at home. Um, but that's not to say that that couldn't happen to any typical family. You know, like any, any typical family who has more than one kid, one of their kids can break an arm or get sick or, you know, God forbid, end up in the hospital for something. And that's just life and you just have to figure it out. So that, but that is one of the main reasons why um, we haven't had another one is just because these first five years have just been really hard. Sebastian's been in and out of the hospital these first five years. Also, when we first had Sebastian, we knew that he would need another big heart surgery around age five or six, which is the one that he just had in December. Um, so we kind of, it was never anything that we discussed, but I feel like in, in knowing that he was going to have another big operation around age five, I think that maybe that might be a reason why we also weren't super focused on having another kid just because we kind of knew in the back of our minds to expect time in the hospital in five years. You know, I'm talking about when he was first born, we knew like, okay, um, he's going to need a big surgery. So maybe we should kind of hold off. So I think, again, Gio and I never really like made that a plan or a reason or discussed about it. But I, again, I think just knowing that in the back of our minds that he would need this surgery that he just had in December, uh, I think we kind of held off on having another baby. Um, but yes, we do plan on having another one. 
And then to kind of piggyback on the topic of having another kid, we always get this question too. If we have another kid, are they going to have the same health complications as Sebastian? More significantly, his syndrome, um, I, and I don't believe so. You never know. You, you never know. Um, but for those of you who are new here or maybe don't know this, Sebastian syndrome, was it is scientifically defined as a freak genetic mutation. It is just a freak thing that happened. And when I say freak thing, it just means that at this time, there's no scientific study to explain why Sebastian syndrome occurred. So a lot of the times certain parents, they carry a gene, one parent carries a gene or another parent carries a certain gene. And then when they cross, it makes that mutation. That's not the case for Sebastian. Um, it has nothing to do with geo or eyes genetics. It is literally just a freak thing that happened okay. to switch it up just a little bit. Um, somebody said, can I share an interesting fact about Gio or Sebastian or myself or all of us that people might be surprised to, kn to know or maybe a fact about Zeus or Nala? Goodness, I'm getting tongue-tied. There's so many questions that I have to answer. Um, a crazy or a fun fact about me, at one point in life, I wanted to be a paramedic. Um, I used to work for an eye surgeon. I play the piano, I taught myself, and I would love to learn how to play the violin someday. And a crazy fact about Gio, gosh, there I don't even know what to say. Maybe something people don't know is that when I first met him, he did a bodybuilding show, like Speedo on the stage and all. <laughs> I think he's going to get mad at me for talking about that. He did a bodybuilding show, though. He looked amazing. I don't have any pictures. We They're in the vault somewhere. I'm trying to think about a fact about Sebastian. I don't know, because I feel like we share so much. I think maybe something I don't know if we've ever talked about before kind of sad, but when Sebastian was born, I mean, everybody, everybody in the hospital was rooting for him. But I think there was a point in time when he was first born where not a lot of people expected him to survive. It was very, he was very, very, very sick. And we had a lot of conversations about um, what could happen and what looked like may happen. Um, Sebastian was baptized when he was three weeks old because there was a point where we thought we just we weren't going to be able to bring him home, um, but he continued to persevere, and now he, he here he is five years later, um, and I think every single week he's getting stronger and better. So that is a fact that there was a point in time where none of us really thought that he was ever going to come home from the hospital. Okay, lots of questions. I am, I think I'm going to pick like 15 right now because this video would be three hours long if I answered all of them. Um, somebody wants to know if Sebastian is gonna need a wheelchair for school. Yes and no, he's going to need something to sit in, um, kind of similar to like his stander over there that you guys have seen us do um, therapy in. Wheelchairs are more so used for like school transportation. It's, the, it's where they are able to put the wheelchair on the school bus and lock it into place. Um, however, Sebastian, I will be driving him to school. The school that we're sending him to is out of district for where we are now, so they can't send a school bus to pick him up anyway. So I'll be taking him. So he doesn't necessarily need a wheelchair for school. He will need a therapy chair to sit in, which we will get for him. Um, and then maybe I think people are probably curious later on in life, as he gets bigger, will he need a wheelchair? Probably. Right now, <laughs> he's five, and he's still pretty small. He's only about... I think 16 or 17 pounds right now. So we're still able to carry him. That's another question too. Like people ask, you know, when he gets older and he gets big, I think people forget that Sebastian syndrome affects his growth. He's always going to be really small. Even people with CDLS in their like 50s and 60s, they're no more than like 45 to 50 pounds. They are very petite people, even as adults. So I think I think that I hopefully will be able to carry Sebastian and have certain seats for him. But in the future, if it's too much and if he's too heavy, um, we'll definitely get an assisted chair for him to use and keep him safe. Another thing too, um, CDLS affects everybody differently. So when I say a lot of the people who are diagnosed with CDLS, even well into their 30s, 40s, and 50s, are petite, I can't say that all of them are only 50 pounds. You know, so everyone carries their own body weight differently, but for the most part, typically, even adults with CDLS are more on the petite side. But again, the syndrome affects everybody. 
it's a very wide, large spectrum. Sometimes it just affects people's mental capabilities and not their physical. Sometimes maybe they grow as normal, you know, but it seems like for Sebastian, he's always going to be on the petite side. So he doesn't require a wheelchair for school, but if he comes to the point where he needs one, um, we will get him one and he will have some type of seat. I'm not sure which, um, that he'll be able to utilize at school. Okay. Question break. <laughs> I'm sure you're tired of looking at me. If you want to say hello to Sebastian, he's rolling around. Hi, mister. What you doing? What's my boy doing? Hello. What are you doing? <laughs> he's just rolling around over here. <laughs> Hi, Pookie. Another common question that we get all the time, sometimes nicely, sometimes not so nicely, is why is Sebastian always in his pajamas? It's like 90 degrees outside and you see him in long, in long sleeve pajamas. Most of the time, it is safer for Sebastian to be in a one piece pajama because of his feeding tube. When he has like a t shirt and shorts on, he can lift his shirt up and mess with his G tube. I don't know that he would ever pull it out on his own he has before with when the feeding tube is attached to it because there's a long cord for him to like rip it out if it was just his button you know without the cord i don't think that he would ever pull that out but it is safer for him to have like a zip up on where he can't actually like reach under his shirt and pull on it um but we do put him in normal clothes if we go outside and it's hot outside we you know put him in some summer clothes but for the most part we're in the house usually sebastian doesn't like the hot it's hard for him to keep himself cool so we spend a lot of time indoors where there's air conditioning and it's a little bit chillier. So he's oftentimes in his little long sleeve pajamas because we're inside and it's chilly. But if we do go somewhere warm or somewhere nice, he does have other clothes. It's just kind of safer and a little bit more convenient for him to be just in his jammies because there is that extra safety of him not having total access to his g-tube okay somebody wants to know if all of sebastian's diagnosis are related to each other and they are not they are all separate things that happen meaning his big like umbrella diagnosis his big diagnosis is cdls cornelia delang syndrome it is his genetic syndrome um, his heart defect is separate from cdls not every single person who has cdls also has a heart defect it was just something separate that happened as well as his brain disease it is also something that just happened um, his brain disease doesn't have a big crazy name it's just called encephalopathy it just means brain disease it just means that there are portions of his brain that are diseased but they are not all included in cdls they're all completely separate and before anybody even tries to say anything in the comment section no i did not do drugs when i was pregnant i did not drink when i was pregnant i had a very normal pregnancy um, we actually did not know that anything was going wrong in my pregnancy with Sebastian until I was 30 weeks and we had him at 34 weeks. Um, that's a whole other story I'll have to go into at some time, but basically I was on state insurance and I lost my insurance at 20 weeks. I, that's when you usually get your anatomy scan between like 20 and 24 weeks. Unfortunately, at the time I had lost my insurance um, from pregnant at 20 weeks until 30 weeks I finally got it reinstated so I didn't see anybody for those 10 weeks in my pregnancy and again it was a normal pregnancy we didn't think anything um, and then at 30 weeks that's when we found out that he had his heart defect and we knew that he would need heart surgery and then four weeks later he was born and we found out about everything else meaning his syndrome and his brain disease okay here is a heavier question that nobody wants to talk about but it is a reality somebody wants to know how we navigate decisions for sebastian of geo and i should no longer be here and i don't know if this is typical for all hispanic families but it's definitely a thing in geo's family if something were to happen to Gio and I, Sebastian's godparents would take over legal guardianship of Sebastian. So Gio's sister or brother would take care of Sebastian. Um, and having said that, they know all of his medical history. They've been there for every single surgery. They both have met his doctors. We have all of Sebastian's medical files in a certain place if anything should happen, God forbid. But yes, um, Geo's sister or brother would have legal guardianship of Sebastian, but he also has so much other family that would be very, very active in his life and be able 
to make the best decisions decisions for him and we trust that now i know a lot of you are probably thinking like wow that is a really big responsibility to take, to take on do they really do they really know that in being his godparents, if something happened to you, they would have to take him? And the answer to that is yes. We have had that conversation. I think a lot of people just say like, will you be my baby's godmother? And it's just a title that you give a special person. But in our family, that it's it's bigger. It's a bigger meaning. And being Sebastian's godparents and accepting that role, they took that role knowing that if something were to ever happen, they would have legal guardianship of him. But like I said, there's so many other family members too that would jump in and help out. Um, I hope that never happens, but we have had conversations on what life would look like if that did. And maybe I could go into that another time with his family members if that's something they would want to do. But um, just the immediate answer is he would go to his godparents. Okay, somebody wants to know how geo and i deal with strangers in public who might not be so kind and to be honest with you it doesn't happen very often i feel like sebastian has such i don't know he just has such a presence about him that when people see him they just like melt they just want to hold him and hug him and kiss him obviously they don't but we get a lot more intrigued and warm interactions than we do like mean ones i can't say the same when he was younger when he was younger um, he looked a little bit different and that's just being honest. It's okay to say that. Um, he does have different facial features, so people do stare, but it's usually not mean. But when he was younger, um, he was still adjusting to his heart. He was very, very puffy. He was discolored from his heart. Um, he was on oxygen. He had a feeding tube in his nose. And those days were a little bit harder because it's really hard to see people just staring at your kid like that. Um, but it doesn't really happen very often anymore. But if it did happen, usually I just meet people where they are. And if they're staring at us, I just say, would you like to say hi? It's okay to say hi to him. Or I'll just say his name's Sebastian. Like, hi. Um, I'm not... I try to be very understanding of people. I know that Sebastian's facial characteristics are not typical, so I understand why people stare. But also, um, just from a special needs mom perspective, we'd rather you just say hello. And if people don't know how to say hello, then I will just say hello first. I'll be like, hi, do you wanna come say hello? <laughs> like, it's okay, you can you can come say hi, it's okay. Especially with little kids. Little kids stare. Um, Sebastian's very confusing to them and the parents often apologize to me. And I say, no, 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 it's okay, they can come say hi. But that's why it's important as parents to teach your kids that not everybody looks the same. There's my tip of the day. Okay, this next question, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what they meant by it, if it was intended to be sarcastic or if it, it was an actual question, I'm not sure, but somebody said, do you think that you need to be validated or treated special just because Sebastian won't live a full life? And my answer to that is absolutely not. Sebastian is our kid. He was just born this way. And when you have babies, you love them no matter what. There, there's nothing we could do to change the way that Sebastian was born. And the only thing that we have chosen to do is love him, no matter what life looks like him. If he was a typical kid, I don't know that we would have this channel because I'm not sure that I would know what to be advocating about a typical child at this point, but we do have Sebastian and he is special and I do have things that I want to teach people. So I don't have this channel to get a pat on the back for being such a great mom. I don't think I'm the world's best mom, but I think that I am the best mom to Sebastian. And I don't think that I need a pat on the back for that. He's just our kid. We're just, we're keeping him alive and we're just living life with him and we're loving on him and we're rooting for him. And that's just what life looks like for us. But no, I, I don't think that I deserve a pat on the back because Sebastian was born special. So. Okay, I'm probably gonna finish up soon. Sebastian is getting a little bit impatient with me. I was nannying the girls all day long. He did not get a normal nap today, so he's a little cranky. Um, Gio's gonna get home soon though, so I'll film a little bit with them. And then don't forget, at the end, very end of this video, I have a really cute video of Gio driving his car for the first time and Sebastian and I were following him in the go-kart and it's just very cute. It's a very full circle moment for our family. So hang out for that. I'm gonna answer one more question. Okay, this one is kind of like a three-part question. The first part is, does Sebastian understand Spanish? I see Gio's family speaking to him in Spanish. Sometimes I wonder if he is bilingual. And the truth is we don't really know exactly what speech, whether it's English or Spanish, that Sebastian is 
understanding because he can't tell us, right? He doesn't communicate with words. Um, and even though we talk to Sebastian in our little baby voice that we do sometimes that annoys people, um, we still speak to him both in Spanish and English in normal full sentences as you would any other five-year-old because at the end of the day, Sebastian is five. And even though he does have disabilities and delays in his brain and processing things, we still know that at some level he is taking in language and, and understanding certain things. So we do speak to him in full sentences, both Spanish and English, just because it's still super important, even if your child has a disability, to speak to them as they are, where they are as a five-year-old or whatever age, it's still really important to meet them where they are and speak to them at their age level. We do a lot of baby talk on this channel. We do a lot of like voices and stuff to Sebastian, but we still do speak to him as if he were a five-year-old because he is a five-year-old. And again, at some some level, he's he's understanding some of it, we believe. We choose to believe that. The second part to her question, um, was wondering about the animals. She said we were really good um, animal owners, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. But she was wondering, I think it's a she, Natasha. Um, anyway, she was wondering if at some point we were worried about getting animals and having extra responsibilities on top of having a child with special needs. And yeah, definitely. Like when he's in the hospital for a long time, recovering from a surgery or whatever, it is hard to take care of the animals and be there for Sebastian. But that's the responsibility you take on. Um, we thought for a very long time before we got Nala because birds are a different breed to own. So we thought about it for years and years and years before we actually bought her. Um, and I would say just, like I said, 80 to 90% of the time we're home and we felt like it was an okay time and we still feel like it's an okay time to have Nala. When we originally got Zeus, we did not think about that for too long at all. Um, so we saw Zeus on the local rescue page for one of the animal shelters. Whew, and that was really, really rough. Um, Zeus came from a very, very abusive family. Um, you probably notice that his ears are really small. The people who had Zeus previously cut his ears with scissors because they wanted to use him as a fighting dog. But if you have been here for a while and you have witness Zeus's demeanor he is the least fight worthy dog ever and that is why they literally just put him in a garbage can somewhere in one of these local cities and thankfully somebody found him um and they treated him and then they posted him for adoption and we literally Gio sent me a picture of him and I just said let's go get him Let's go get him. Now, the shelter, I can't say were as enthusiastic about us taking in Zeus, knowing that we had a special needs child. They were very hesitant because Zeus was still new to them, and they know that he had a very traumatic history. They could tell that he had a good demeanor, but you never know because animals are still animals at the end of the day. With him having a history of his breed, people love to unfortunately hate on pit bulls he is a pit bull and he's mixed with sharpay we think um you just never know and especially him coming from a traumatic history they were really concerned but we were able to bring sebastian into the shelter for them to meet and interact and then we had like a two-week trial of having zeus at home to see how he would do in the home with sebastian and the rest is history we brought him home and we never brought him back now having said that us as sebastian's parents we also had reservations. We were also kind of, we thought a lot about it. I, we made our decision fast, but we thought a lot about it too. Like, is this the best thing? This could be bad. He has a violent history. We thought about it too, having a special needs kid and adopting a dog with a history like Zeus's. But we also just felt like, this dog needs people to love him and we wanted nothing, but we just wanted to bring him home and give him a chance. So we kind of kept them separate and then we just kind of let them do their own thing. And Zeus, from the minute we brought him home, was just so invested and intrigued by Sebastian and he has been such like a service animal to me. And he's, I can't even, I can't explain it. Zeus, he just fit perfectly with us. Of course we thought about it. Of course we were nervous, but we gave him a chance and I'm so glad I'm so glad that we did because because Zeus has been nothing but the most 
amazing dog to our family. I could talk about him for hours and hours and hours, but I won't because this video is probably already super long. But yes, it was a big decision. It was a little bit scary, both with Nala and Zeus, just adding extra responsibilities on top of having all the responsibilities with Sebastian. Of course, um, it can be a lot at times, but I don't think we would change either of them. I don't think we would. We love, we love both of our animals. <laughs> in this big crazy family that we have. The last part of this person's question is, will you ever make a video whereby you read out our love comments to you guys, to Sebastian, so we can see and enjoy the love from across the world? And I absolutely, I, I love this question. I love this statement. And we do do that. We don't ever film it, but Gio and I, I wouldn't say every night, definitely me, but almost every night, you know, when I upload a no, new video, we just are looking at the comments and we do feel so much love. And I think Sebastian knows that too. Um, I think that he knows he has a big support system. He definitely turns it on for the camera sometimes. So I feel like he knows when I'm recording and I just hope that he feels purpose. I hope that he understands it's a privilege for us to be his parents and to be able to teach you guys about him. But maybe I'll try sometime re Reading some comments to him and see if he has a reaction to it. I love that. Okay, there are still so many comments that I did not get to. There are, I think, almost 400 on this video, but I kind of want to break it up um, into separate videos so you guys just aren't listening to me talk the whole entire time. So I think I'm going to end the question portion of this video here. Like I said earlier, Gio is going to be home shortly so we can check in with the boys. And then at the very end of this video, I'm going to attach the clip from yesterday of Gio finally being able to drive his yellow car. Sebastian and I are following him in the go-kart and then we'll either check in tomorrow or the next day. I do have to nanny tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to vlog, but we will definitely see you this week. If I did not get to your question in this video, please be patient. Maybe it'll be in the next video. <laughs> did you want to answer? Do you want to answer anything? Yeah? What else? Okay. Anything else you wanted to say? Yeah? Is that it? Yeah, that's it? Are you waiting to go to bed? <laughs> Daddy's gonna be home soon so you guys can snuggle and then you're gonna go na night. Yes, you are. You've been so cranky. You're gonna go na night. You tell everyone it was good to see them? Yeah, hi. See, it's good to see you guys. What? He's sleepy. Daddy's gonna be here soon. <laughs> home. I told you dad was coming. Yeah. The dad's <laughs> here. I'm gonna snuggle with my dad for a little bit. Yeah, you dad's you. Now Nala's going crazy too because she is home. Everyone's crazy. <laughs> is that your daddy? Yeah. I'm gonna snuggle with him and then we're gonna show everybody um, your yellow car on the road yesterday. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you wanna say about your journey in the yellow car? Cause everybody's about to see you driving it for the first time over a year. Yeah, I, I would say I'm like, as weird as it sounds, it's like I'm 70% of the way there. Like I'm still discovering so many things about the car that I didn't know. Cause right. it, the previous owner, I think, uh, and did some shenanigans with it. So I still think there's a lot more to go. Okay. Everybody's about to see. I'm trying to cover Gio's <laughs> workplace, but people are weird. They'll probably zoom in anyway. But anyway, Sebastian's falling asleep. Gio still has 30% to go in your car? Yeah, I would say. We still have to uh, take down the the sides of the car, and you have to build like a cage around it, right? Yeah, but that's like when it's all completed. Like, I just want to make sure everything drives good and it runs good before I spend money on yeah. the outside like that. Okay. So. Well, everybody, you're getting ready to see Gio driving his yellow car for the first time after being rebuilt. And then we'll see you guys later this week, okay? <laughs>
the gators. Bye. <laughs> Bye.